So I'm going to re-pull with 100 milliliters of ethyl acetate. This is the combined of all the teas I had. And I didn't have any more sodium carbonate. And the pH was pretty low. That's why there was such a low crystallization. So I went against my better judgment and just added calcium hydroxide and this is calcium carbonate that precipitated out. In the future, I remembered that I tried calcium hydroxide, but I was adding the powder directly to the reduced tea. In the future, I'll make a saturated solution of aqueous calcium hydroxide, which is very low, like one, one gram per 500 milliliters. But the pH is much higher, so I may need less of an aqueous solution to make the pH high enough. And I'm going to separate this and try to pull and salt the ethyl acetate. It's a very clear solution so far. There may be some annoying uh, precipitates that stay between the aqueous and the organic layer, but I want to do the final pull so I could discard my aqueous solution. I'm just doing a second pull and I'll salt and see how it goes. And for anyone that doesn't know what I'm doing, this is a new extraction that I'm doing. Instead of starting with dry material, you start with a reduced tea, then you basify it, you pull, you salt to reduce the water content in the ethyl acetate and then you salt directly without any rest. So here my ethyl acetate is in a brine tea solution now and I'm going to remove the aqueous layer to discard and I'm going to salt the organic layer at the top as soon as I make sure there's no liquid or particulates in it. So on the final milliliter or so, you want to put it in a very small vessel and you want to make sure to sacrifice a little bit of the ethyl acetate, ethyl acetate so there is zero brine water in the organic layer. So you want to make sure there's a small amount of ethyl acetate in the shot glass that you separated. And now you can see there's some particulates in the ethyl acetate. So I'm going to filter the ethyl acetate and then I'll salt right after. There are no salt bubbles with the sodium carbonate. There's There tends to be a, some salt bubbles that form and filtering won't, won't fix that issue. You fix the issue of the salt bubbles in the ethyl acetate by decanting a few times since it, the bubbles will stick to the glass. Here it's from a lime water, so this is likely calcium or, or it's calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxide precipitate. So I want to filter. And it should be crystal clear. And there's no water since I removed the small layer. And I can salt immediately after. So if you want to squeeze the filter paper to save the ethyl acetate, do so into another, uh, another beaker 
since it will most likely also carry over some of the precipitate. So I'll be doing that into the smaller beaker and salting as well. And this one is very clear so I, I can salt directly. So now I'm salting directly. This was the the leftover tea that I already made the first pull of. I didn't have the pH low enough, so I added some calcium hydroxide. It was a pain to precipitate to filter out the precipitate of calcium carbonate. So next time I'll be attempting a saturated water of calcium hydroxide and use no sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate sodium carbonate is nice because it's cheaper and it's more readily available since you can just make it from baking soda but if the lime water doesn't so doesn't make so many bubbles it'll be a better choice and since the solubility is quite low for it to saturate, it, it actually comes out pretty cheap considering the volume needed for a very high pH. This one, a good thing I saved the liquid. It clouded extremely well. Now I'll be covering this with aluminum foil and letting it sit for a day and I'll check on the crystal formations tomorrow. And here are the needles from my first pull that didn't have a low enough pH. You can still see it, it precipitated some crystals and it's still growing a bit so i'll be leaving this for another day or so this is only 24 hours after and it clouded nowhere near what this clouded so i'm pretty excited about the potential for this tech especially for very large extractions considering that you wouldn't want to have multiple liters of ethyl acetate. You could just use a few milliliters, a few hundred, but still drastically less. I was able to recover that lost milliliter that was in between the water layer and the ethyl acetate. I can't really measure this precise so I'm just going to sprinkle some citric acid until it clouds a bit it's clouding and I think that's good So now I'll cover this and we'll see if anything actually forms here. <laughs> 